Well, hello, my peeps. It's Antoinette here. Today, we're going to make something very special. We are going to make real yeast uh, carbolose flour English muffins. I'm really looking forward to this. I have my 70s apron on and I'm ready to bake. So to get started, we have to create the yeast. I have one and a half tablespoons of active dry yeast in here. And then I had to heat up my honey because I only use this for my Deidre bread so far. Um, we need some sugar for the yeast to eat. So one teaspoon only. Right on the yeast. Oh yeah, it's eating it already. Next, we need a quarter cup of hot water. So, let's get some hot water. I'm waiting, the water is hot now. It took a while because my hot water heater is on its last leg and I have a home warranty. I only have to pay $75 uh, once it dies for this company to put in a new one. <laughs> um, so that's a good sign. It's taking a long time for the hot water to heat up. One quarter cup. I'm just gonna stir this up a bit. And we are going to uh, allow this yeast and honey to bloom for 10 minutes. I'm just gonna cover it up. In here, I have sifted three cups of my carbulose flour. I'll leave a link for you in the description. Also, for 10 minutes. We need a quarter cup of flaxseed meal in another bowl. I've got my big measuring cup bowl. Quarter cup of flaxseed meal. Golden. And then I need a quarter cup of warm water. See if we can get more warm water. It's already hot. Another quarter cup of hot water. I'm just going to mix that with the flaxseed meal. Oh, what did I do with my spoon? Grab a spoon. And we're just going to mix this and let this sit for 10 minutes along with the yeast. It's going to become uh, quite like gelatin. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, I have everything else together and it's been a little bit more than 10 minutes. It's been 16 minutes, uh, but look what happened. To my yeast it really rose so yeah it's ready to go I preheated the oven to the lowest setting that I have um, and my oven it's 170 I'm mixing the yeast mixture um, into the flaxseed meal and then we're gonna add all the wet and dry ingredients together so I have, here I warmed up a quarter cup of just for 10 seconds in the microwave of the heavy whipping cream. Get that out of the way. But first, the dry ingredients. We have guar gum, and that is a quarter teaspoon of guar gum. This is the first time I'm using it. It is a starch. 
Uh, let's see. Quarter teaspoon. Just a little bit. Quarter teaspoon of water. Oops, put that there. Next, we have the xanthan gum, and we want a half a teaspoon of xanthan. Pull that to a half. All right. The xanthan gum I always keep in the freezer. Uh, it just seems to last longer in the freezer. I could put the guar in there as well now that I opened it. If you have room in the freezer, uh, it would be good to keep all your flowers in the freezer. One teaspoon pink salt. Now I'm going to take out of my uh, three cups of sifted carbulose flour, I'm going to use one and a quarter cup. Let's see, here we go. One cup. One cup. So a quarter cup. All right, we'll just leave that there. Then we need a quarter cup of vital wheat gluten. This is how it's real bread. All right, quarter cup. Gluten. That is it for the dry ingredients. I'm going to add one and a quarter cup of warm water. We're baking now. <laughs> okay. And then we have the quarter cup of the heavy whipping cream that's warm. I need to add eight drops of my sucralose or whatever drops you prefer to use. Eight drops. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I had nine, it's okay. Then two tablespoons, uh, two and a half tablespoons of softened butter. This was just out at room temperature. All right, I'm going to grab my Danish whisk that I like to use for doughs. We're going to just mix this all together. It's quite loose. We still have uh, more flour to go. But first, this is going to go in the oven. Well, a very warm place, but that's the best way to do it. Put it on the lowest setting. All right, we are preheated to 170. Mix this very well. The hardest thing to incorporate is the, uh, that flaxseed meal. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here's my dough. It has a consistency like this. Next, we're gonna loosely cover this batter. Um, I'm letting some air flow in there, so I'm not suctioning it. So this, this bowl with the spout was the perfect one to use, and this is oven safe, so. It's going in the oven for an hour and a half. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> now that it's in the oven, you want to turn off the oven. It just has to be in a warm place. All 
I'm gonna add the rest of this flour quarter cup at a time. Well, I'm not, I'm just eyeballing it. Uh, and what you wanna do is mix it until it can't take any more. Since I sifted my cardigos flour, I don't know how much it's going to take because that blows it up a bit. All right. So this recipe, I want to tell you. All right, I'm going to show you. I got this recipe from a whiner. Well, that's what I want to call her because there's a lot of whining on her website. It's called Low Carb Scams. That's what it's called. Yeah, she wants to find all the scams in the low carb world. Um, she has a lot of uh, uh, things on that. Um, and she has very few limited recipes and this is one of them. Um, but she always uses the carbulose flour. Low-carb-scams.com <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. All right, so it's getting thicker. I'm gonna add more of the carbulose flour um, because we are going to roll this. Now, when we roll it out, um, it says that it should not stick to the counter, but I will use my silicone mat. Yeah, I think I'm going to use it all. Let's just dump it all in. Oh yeah. This is going to be great. It's almost ready to roll. Now, this isn't going into the oven like to bake English muffins. This four inch biscuit cutter, it's really just a, you know, <laughs> a cookie cutter uh, made for biscuits. And um, these are going to make fabulous English muffins. But I'm going to cook them one at a time on my, um, on my dash because, as I've said before, it cooks the best eggs. Um, I don't think I have a pan that will cook these English muffins better than, uh, than my eight inch dash griddle. I highly recommend it. All right, we're gonna roll it out. Now, there's a little moisture in, in the English muffin. So I took my carbulose flour and added about a quarter cup right here on my silicone mat. Now it says that you probably uh, could roll it right on your counter without sticking, but um, we're gonna find out. So I added a quarter cup um, approximately onto my mat and I'm going to grab my dough and put it out here and we're going to knead it a bit for a few minutes. So I put up my gloves because this could be messy. Okay. Yes, this is a bit of a project, but that's okay uh, because they freeze well. Ah, I need my apron. So I'm going to just roll this dough. Yeah, it needs uh, more carbulose flour. Just gonna knead it for a few minutes and let it sit here. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, better already. It's drying up. I'm just gonna do this for about two more minutes. And then I'm gonna let it sit. It's still warm. So um, I think it needs to sit and set uh, for just a bit before we go rolling this out. Now that's a lot of dough. All right. Let's beat it. Okay. So this is a little sticky to me still. So um, I threw some carbulose flour in here. I'm just gonna sift some on top. I need it a little bit more. Yeah. This kind of thing is, uh, you know, to the texture desired. I just think that uh, it has a bit too much moisture right now to roll. All right. Now I could put this in my silicone English muffin um, uh, pan, but I'm not, I am going to fry it because that is going to give us the nooks and crannies that we miss from Thomas's fabulous fork cut English muffins. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let this sit for a while to absorb the carbulose flour. There we go. It's got yeast, so you know, you gotta keep on kneading it and pushing it down as it rises. We'll see you in a few. I have some parchment paper here, and what I'm looking for is to roll out my dough to approximately about a half an inch. So, all right, here we go. don't want it too thin. <clears throat> All right, let's cut some out. Now, you want to press it, but you, you don't want to twist it too much. <laughs> Twisting it. All right. Beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay, perfect. Now, over here, I have some uh, melted butter. And my dash is heating. I'm just gonna brush uh, my, my round with uh, butter. Now, then I need My little spatula, let's see, it's hot. So there it is, about a half an inch thick. And I'm gonna fry this on my dash for about four minutes on the first side. Four minutes on the first side. Don't 
bother it. You'll notice that it's rising, but it's going to fall. I mean, it looks higher than uh, it will end up. So, four minutes on uh, the first side and uh, let it fall. You didn't do anything wrong when it falls. I know this looks high, but uh, it's been four minutes. So we're gonna uh, flip it, but first we have to uh, brush it with some butter. This will deflate. I know it looks high now, but uh, it will fall. It's flipped and uh, we're probably gonna cook it a little less than four minutes, but now we're gonna bring down the cover to cook it through. <laughs> Seriously, have you ever seen English muffins like this? Good morning, my peeps. It's Sunday and uh, we're gonna make an Egg McMuffin out of our wonderful English muffins that we made yesterday. They fit perfectly in this canister. Um, I have some Jimmy Dean sausage and uh, I'm gonna fry up a, a sausage patty on my Dash grill. I was up late last night um, I watched this movie that I couldn't get past. Um, it was called The Mountain Between Us. It's a 2017 movie uh, that was streaming on Hulu Live. Um, about being lost in the mountains after a plane crash. It was a really good movie. If you could find it, I would uh, highly recommend that movie. I'm supposed to work today. I don't know if I'm going to do it. Um, well, it's not mandatory, but we're buried alive. But when you work this much, if you're doing 10, 12 hour days, then you need your weekends to recuperate. Seriously. I don't know that I'm going to do it. I'm thinking about going to the pool instead. All right, Ooh, we're ready to roll. This is going to be delicious. All right, I'm going to put my sausage into a baggie. For later in the week. It smells great. All right, let me grab a muffin. They smell really good. I did fork poke them before I fried them yesterday. Just gonna use those holes as a guide. For how high they were, they really do uh, sink, but it is definitely English muffin size. We're going to toast this. What I'm going to do is I just put this whole canister in the freezer. Let's take the patty out. You don't get a piece of sausage like this from Mickey D's. <laughs> this is gonna be great. I'm gonna grab a little butter.
one firm fresh egg. Get that butter in there. Okay, I'm telling you, this eight inch griddle makes the best fried egg. It's just the best. I really wish that they would come out with a bigger one, maybe square. Um, I would buy it. I would definitely buy it. All right. Yeah, you don't even have to flip it. You just shut it and it makes it like uh, over easy. It's fabulous. There's my Egg McMuffin. <laughs> Now that's a hearty breakfast. Let's have a bite. I must say, that tastes most like an English muffin um, out of anything that I've tried so far. I know it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work, but um, it was fun to make and it was nice being with you all. So uh, thanks for stopping by for another video. I'm gonna go eat this and edit this video. We'll see you next time. Oh wait, let me show you what next time is. I found it. This was the only one on the internet. I'm serious. Um, the, of the Hamilton Beach. You can get the Phillips pasta maker for $300 or you can get it refurbished for uh, $180. Um, but I got this, the last one on the internet for $119 um, from uh, Walmart.com. Uh, of course, Walmart wasn't selling it. You know, it was a third party. I haven't played with it yet, but we will play with it together next time.